Okay, guys, welcome. Um, I think we already did get to know each other a little bit better, of course. Yesterday night, everybody came in, uh, some with a little bit more luck than others, but it is what it is. Uh, we are here all now, and uh, first of all, I want to say and thank everybody for being here, of course. Uh, until now, I think it has been an amazing journey already, and we still got a long, long way to go. We still got two full days, and um, yeah, that's all about going to be uh, getting to know each other better. So that's also what we're going to start with, but also, of course, business breakthroughs and more valuable insights on how to not only level up with network, but of course, also with your business. Because of time purposes, uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to do my talk tomorrow uh, because Morten is coming as well, the, the king of dating at five. So we don't want to keep you guys inside too long. Uh, but for now, for the people that don't know me just yet, uh, Jisk, 26 years old, been in the e-com game and the entrepreneurial space for three years. Uh, before that, I was just following like a university study. Uh, got someone also out of my network that was doing dropshipping already and that was everything I needed for to jump on an opportunity and things changed drastically afterward, after that. Uh, positive and negative, going to tell a little bit more about that later on tomorrow uh, because of time purposes, like I said. But for now, uh, started at zero, scaled the e-com businesses to over a couple of seven or seven figures and the uh, education business is now also surpassed the seven figures. So um, yeah, has been quite a journey. Um, and because I want to understand everybody's business and also for you guys to understand each other, uh, I would actually like to follow this route. So please introduce yourself as well. Can be short, sweet, uh, and just name, age, where you're from, and then basically uh, something that you're very proud of uh, when it comes to business accomplishments, etc., etc., and of course, what type of business you have. So if we can do that, that will be amazing. And then after that, of course, our man Billy is going to uh, put some value uh, on the on the screen and uh, chat a little uh, about what he does. Uh, he already gave us some. He already kicked his ass this morning. Um, but I think we are we are prepared to uh, to listen for a while. So let's start here. Yes, of course. My name is David. I'm 21 years old. I came from the Netherlands. Uh on the north side, Leeuwen. Uh, I'm working uh, 2.5 years on crypto trading. Um, now I also started to find out how dropshipping is working. Uh, got a little bit uh, suspect on some accounts, but yeah, we're really still going. Also working as a security guard, since the day. Um, I think five, six months now, so that's it. Yeah. Nice, man. Nice. Nice. Uh, so hello everybody, my name is Stijn Alberts. I'm uh, 20 years old. Uh, I've been in the triac of YISC now for 8 months. Uh, I'm currently doing, uh, doing good, climbing up the ladder. Um, also a student at the Nijrode, uh, going to my second year that next year. Uh, looking forward to that also. Uh, challenging uh, to time manage that. Um, and one thing I'm proud of, um, so yeah, last less, less, um, next last month I did the 44k in revenue, so that's one thing I'm, uh, I'm proud of. Uh, yeah. Nice, bro. Welcome. Marco. So, I'm Marco, I'm just turned 25. I run an agency for also the gentleman here, Ronnie Z. And yeah, proud of, like, we're growing really fast. We still, like, try to give our best to every single client, so trying to keep up the quality as much as possible, try to get back to clients as best as possible, and I'm grateful for how much I'm learning working all the amazing clients that I'm working with right now. So. Nice bro, you're doing a good job, so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so hello, my name is Lisa, I'm 24 years old. Uh, I started dropshipping in the uh, February, in the East, uh, East Red. Um, last month I had some good months, like 30k, and now I'm just going, going, and trying to do the 60k this month. So nice. And the only lady, some respect for the <laughs> for the only lady. Here. <laughs> Well, okay, yeah, then it's getting a little hot, but okay, let's go for it. We can always have a cold plunge afterwards, right? <laughs> Nice, 
Nice, bro. Um, yes, bro. Been the four years old. Been in the drop shipping game for four and a half years. Um, yeah, had some ups and downs. Proud of the ups. Learned from the downs. And uh, also proud to have hired uh, a long-term friend as my CEO. Awesome. Um, so I'm Roman, actually 19 years old. Um, based in Germany. Uh, actually doing e-commerce. Uh, still drop shipping. And one thing I'm proud of is like building my first business uh, while I'm in my final exams in school and right now doing seven figures a year um, but that's like I, 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 the thing I'm really proud of is like giving back to my family and so last week I was able to like fly my mother out to uh, Malaga and spend a week with her in a nice hotel and yeah that's it. Congrats bro. Oh, nice. Hey. Uh, well, my name is Diego, I'm from uh, Belgium, Antwerpen, and uh, I'm 22 years old. I started uh, dropshipping uh, in 2022, in end of November. Uh, I had a lot of ups, a lot of downs, most downs, but uh, still working on everything. And uh, now getting ready for Q4 so I can finally reach my goals and uh, yeah, do some nice stuff. Sitting in my uh, room. <laughs> <laughs> like most of us, yeah, you know. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Uh, my name is Jeffrey. I'm 22 years old. Uh, I come from a small village in the Netherlands. What also, <laughs> what <are you> saying? <laughs> <laughs> also uh, drop shipping uh, around two years right now. I have done multiple seven figures, um, so that's nice. Um, something I'm really proud of is that I'm building a team where I literally make the people happy with the salary I pay them. I, I've got like messages from almost all my employees that they just send like things of their kids, like, hey, uh, because of you giving me work, my kid can dance and they send like an image of their kid. And it makes me so happy to provide those people like the work, uh, even when I'm like saying like, you're doing the work, I pay you, you deserve it. Like they're so, uh, they so happy. And the fact that you're like a person that provides people like groceries, you know, a roof on top of their head. Um, I think that's amazing. So that would be my uh, nice, bro. Idea. Nice. I'm Debbie, 21 years old, from the Netherlands, living in Portugal, and CEO of the TikTok Inc., the coaching business uh, in Mix. That's it. Nice. Nice, bro. Cool. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Tom. Um, yeah, I'm the founder of Seasons, coaching Gym Shorts. Um, but we'll tell a little bit more about that tomorrow. I'm um, 25 years old. I uh, still uh, live uh, with my parents. I have a girlfriend. And I'm just uh, doing my thing. Nice. More uh, tomorrow, of course. One last thing that I want to say before we jump over to uh, Billy, and Billy can introduce himself, is um, there are more people from the Netherlands here, of course, uh, but let's keep it English. Also, when you have a little chat, just to, uh, for everybody to understand and feel welcome. I think we're already do a gr doing a great job, but it's just uh, some extra respect to, uh, towards the, the people that came here from other countries as well. So, without further ado, Billy, the stage is yours, man. We'll make it happen. So, uh, okay, my name is Billy Harris. Obviously, I'm, I'm based in London. I'm 25. I've now been operating Peak Performance, which is a health and performance coaching business for about six years, pushing towards seven now. And uh, the premise for it is very simple. I work with individuals that are doing seven, eight and nine figures of their business to optimize their health and performance through a 12 week process. I've had the opportunity now to work with some really cool clients. So obviously Iman Gadzi, I worked with him in person for three years. How many of you guys are aware of Iman? I'm sure pretty much all of you. Yeah, yeah. worked with him in person for three years. So I started working with him, he was doing like 50K per month, all up to half a million per month with both the education business and his agency. So obviously really cool to see that process unfold. Other individuals like Bass started working with him initially in 2019. The first call I had with him was when uh, he was actually just getting a job as an appointment setter and he had 50p in his account, he was dead broke. And then uh, a month later he applied to work with me again and he was doing like 10k a month at the time. So yeah, now obviously he's doing about a million per month with his education businesses. So really cool to see that process unfold as well. And of course, also get an insight to how he chooses to live his life. And that's something that I've gained value in from working with all my clients actually as well. Other individuals like Cole Gordon, I don't know if you guys are too familiar with Cole. 
He's a really big player in the space. When I was working with him and his COO, Mitchell Miles, he's doing about $2 million per month, primarily through paid as I was discussing with Marco earlier. But I believe he's now doing like three to four million per month. So seeing how he operated was also quite fascinating to be fair. Um, other individuals like my friend Tyler, he's doing about 200K per month from his education business and property business. Other players like the Mickelson twins, if you guys are aware of them, they're doing obscenely well currently. Many other faces in the agency space, education space, e-commerce, etc. software spaces also. Um, also individuals in South America like Marcos Rossetti, Dan Vass, who's also at the time doing a million per month, but has pulled back as of late. And uh, other unknown clients who are doing 16 million per month. This was their launch month. Um, they're in the software space and this guy's 27. So yeah, it's been pretty interesting to see how he chooses to live his life and of course how he's facilitated that growth. And this business for clarity, for context also, um, it's actually a business that donates where the money for a charity goes. So it benefits both the charity and the individual donating. So of course it's done very, very well, which is really cool to see. And the process I facilitate is optimizing six components of the health and performance, which are as follows. So sleep optimization, peak, behavioral change, which of course does require practices in this instance to refine health quality, flawless training, medical testing, and personalized supplementation. And of course the objective is pretty simple and straightforward really, is to increase their focus, intelligence, output, creativity, and performance using the protocol we've now developed. At this stage, as I said, I'm about six years in, I've worked with about 600 people to facilitate this. So it's been practiced a fair few times and uh, therefore we've obviously nailed everything out as well. And we now deliver it in a, in a protocol medium to keep it very simple and straightforward for all clients. So in terms of the process, the clients that I work with work with me for one basic reason, they facilitate initial financial success at a very young age, so maybe 22, 23, 24, the age of you guys as well. And they now realize that in order to get to the next level, it won't necessarily be strategy that's holding them back. It'll be their ability to perform day in and day out. As a byproduct of this, I'm sure you guys have felt the same thing as well. Perhaps you've been working extreme hours and therefore, of course, your sleep quality is compromised. You feel like you are lacking energy, you have a foggy head, you can't focus particularly well, your discipline falls out the window as well. As a byproduct of that, you have cravings associated to food, and as a byproduct, you feel terrible from the bad quality food source you consumed. Inflammation creates brain fog and fatigue, and again, it, it creates a vicious cycle. Most individuals that I've worked with, as I said, have done very well very early on with their career, and as a byproduct, have sacrificed their health to achieve success with their business, right? And this instance, we need to basically reverse engineer that and now get their health back on track. Pretty simple and straightforward. The premise is very simple. Have you guys watched The Last Dance with Michael Jordan, the basketball documentary? Yeah where it basically explores everything he did to facilitate and actually leverage all of his talents, right? Therefore become the best basketball player ever, right? Pretty simple premise. He really truly did every, leverage every single tiny component he possibly could to really maximize his talent. And as you guys can see as a byproduct of that, his career is incredibly successful and he's the best that's ever lived in the basketball space, arguably. And again, the premise is simple here. The clients that I work with want to do the same thing to maximize their business growth. However, of course, it's gonna be difficult to perform at your best or succeed in your business venture if you're a smart person operating at only 60% of your capacity, you're sleeping terribly, you're plagued by brain fog, you're a victim of daily midday crashes, constantly fatigued, you're dealing with turbulent emotions daily, procrastinate, you're unable to think with crystal clear clarity, you're stressed about the fact you've gained weight perhaps, you're not happy with your body at that time as well, you can't summon the necessary energy to work efficiently, you perform inconsistently day in and day out, you're irritable, you can't recall information with ease, and of course you're on the brink of burnout. How many of you guys have experienced these kind of things on screen at any point in your career so far? Pretty much everyone, right? And how many of you guys would like to remove those things as best as possible? Yeah, okay, cool, pretty simple. The curse of early success is pretty simple. And again, you guys are all under 25 in this room, myself included. We've all achieved great success financially speaking with our careers early, but we have never actually learned how to maximize our efficiency and performance. And therefore we think we can ride the wave of our, our smarts and natural talents and perhaps also business opportunities we've been perhaps even lucky to fall on at times. However, this leads to, of course, very poor life habits, levels of focus, productivity, and output, and of course, a massive blindness as a byproduct. The individuals that are beating you in your space or have facilitated growth to a million per month and above and beyond have really, truly maximized their health. I've worked for the majority of them at this stage, and I can say that with my hand on my heart, um, in terms of their fixation and obsession on improving their quality of health to maximize their, their ability to perform, okay? How many of you guys feel like you have your health in check right now, out of curiosity? Like, somewhat? Okay, cool. How would you define that? Would you define that as being like you train frequently, you eat well? What, how are you defining quality of health? Um, I mean, I try to eat like organic foods most of the time, like as much as I possibly can. I mean, workout killed me this morning, but like I like <laughs> do a workout. But yeah. Um, so I think it's, I'm getting there. Okay, cool. What about you other guys? Anything else? Uh, having the fundamentals in shape, I think. Say again? Having the fundamentals in shape. So eating healthy, no processed foods, no processed sugar, working out. Um, but like just basics, 
Right. Okay, cool. Anything to do with sleep? Any sleep metric assessments? Um, yes, I have the Alloran, so I'm also supplementing a bit. Um, but there's still a lot of room to grow by. So. For sure. Anything else from you guys? Anything else you guys do to improve the quality of health? I think you listen to, to your body. If it tells you something, um, yeah, basically if it tells you what you need. For sure. In terms of fatigue management, is that what you're referring to? In terms of fatigue management, is that what you're referring to? So when you feel tired, lethargic? Yeah, yeah you, you, you can make, make mostly feel what's, what's happening. You can basically feel what your body needs. For sure. Um, especially the things you just said, you have to experience it and then you learn that something's a trigger and then you should stop or change something. For sure. And the approach I'm going to dive into now as well, to give you more context, will be predicated heavily on metric data towards your health. So blood work analysis, gut health assessment, sleep metric analysis as well. So I'll give you guys an insight on how to leverage that information and benefit from it as well, or how to interpret your own health metrics rather than going just based on feel as well, which is also really important, okay? How many of you guys currently think you're operating at only 60% of your capacity, but you're wanting to perform at 100%? Like hands on heart, how many of you guys feel like that? Yeah, most people do typically. And of course, it's what we need to, to rectify. In this instance, of course, we want to improve your inputs. So optimize sleep, nutrition, behavioral change practices, training, medical testing, and supplementation as a byproduct, reap the benefits of these outputs here. Okay, how many of you guys want these outputs? Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool, awesome. Again, the individuals that I've worked with, are, as I said, operating at an obscene level, financially speaking, they've done all of these things and therefore are benefiting from these components on screen. Yeah, they can attain, they've attained peak performance of all components of their health. They are naturally pretty talented and gifted, of course, most individuals that I work with are. They're more organized, they op operate more focus and clarity, have more energy, they're very disciplined, very disciplined individuals. Incredibly productive, reap the benefits of daily elevated mood. They're happy more consistently, can easily outperform and outwork their competitors by operating you know, 14 hours per day for six days per week. And I've seen individuals do that firsthand. And in short, they're not fucking around. They're taking this very, very seriously, okay? So what we're gonna do first is evaluate your health score. So what I want you guys to do, if you have a notebook, is just take note of your score for each component, okay? So first and foremost, sleep. As you can see, it's in alphabetical order. We have A, B, C, D, E, and F. A is, of course, spending eight to nine hours per night in bed and tracks their sleep quality with an aura ring or a whip band. B, so go for it. Like, Depending on which category you fit into. Yeah, yeah. B spends eight hours per night in bed but doesn't track their sleep with an aura or whoop and therefore has no metrics to inform themselves of. Spends five to seven hours per night in bed and tracks their sleep with an aura or whoop is C. D spends five to seven hours per night in bed but doesn't track their sleep quality. E spends less than five hours per night in bed and tracks her sleep with an aura or whoop. And F, of course, is basically abysmal quality sleep. What's an aura or whoop? Do you not know what an aura ring is? No. Okay, aura ring is a device, it's a ring which tracks your sleep quality, and I'll show you some examples of that later. So you're going to fall into one of the, the categories C below, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Okay, cool. Have you written their answer down? Yeah, yeah all good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Training. First, trains four times per week or more and engages in a mix of resistance and cardiovascular sessions. Yeah, so I know most of you guys just do resistance work. B, trains four times per week or more and does either resistance or cardio training, but not both. C, trains one to two times per week and engages in a mix of resistance and cardio work. D, trains one to two times per week and does either resistance or cardio training, but not both. E, occasionally work out. And of course, F doesn't train at all. What would you uh, tell a kickboxing is? Cardio. Cardio? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like it's also like lots of like push-ups and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's definitely cardio, man. Your heart rate elevates drastically. Yeah, everyone all good? Okay, cool. Nutrition. I won't read them out line by line. It's easier if you guys do it. Everyone good? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Medical testing. How many of you guys have done any blood work before? Yeah? Do you know what blood work you did? Um, no, it was like more or less some, some years ago, just like, the, uh, just like the vitamins in my blood. Okay, cool. Nice. So How about you, bro? Uh, I had like super, super acne when I was younger, so I had to get my blood work. I have it somewhere at home, but I'm not sure. Okay, man, cool. So yeah, if you guys categorize yourself based on these as well, there's only three categories for this section. So it's pretty simple in this instance. Everyone got it? 
Yeah? Okay, cool. Supplementation. I'll read them out to keep it simple. A, your supplements are 100% personalized and based on your blood test results. B, you take recommended health supplements daily. C, you occasionally forget but usually take recommended health supplements. Or D, you take no supplements whatsoever. Everyone good? Okay, and body composition. And again, this is arguably partly subjective. A, you are less than 10% body fat. B, you're exactly 10% body fat. C, you're between 10 to 20. D, you're 20 to 30. E, you believe, of course, your body composition isn't ideal and you need to address that pretty quickly. What would you say? <laughs> uh, yourself, 10 to 20. 10, 12. All good? Okay, cool. We can go through step by step if you guys want. So what was everyone's, we'll start with Yisk first. What was your sleep first, bro? B. B. Okay, man, cool. Let's go around the room. D. D. Okay, man. D. Okay, bro. Marco. Oh, B. B. Okay. B. B. Cool. B as well. B. Uh, I would say A. Nice, man. Okay, cool, nice. So there's some work to be done on sleep metrics and I'll dive into this in a second. What I'll reference on screen at some point also, and I'll pull this up towards the, the latter end, is an example of some metrics we can refer to and of course assess together. Um, I don't know why it's shown so small either, but this is what an example of an aura, a good day of aura sleep metrics would look like. And I'll pull this up and analyze this for you guys in more detail as well and show you how you can facilitate this as well, okay? Sleep being, from my perspective, the foundational pillar to all components of, of health and also performance when it comes to your work. If your sleep is in the gutter, you're going to feel terrible daily. As a byproduct, your ability to work, of course, will be negated or impacted. Yeah? Okay, yes. Let's go for you, bro. Training. Uh, B as well. B? Okay, man, cool. Do you do majority resistance work or cardio work? Cardio. Cardio. Okay, cool. B. B. Uh, B. 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 Oh, sorry. B. 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 C or D. C or D. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. How many of you guys, so what's the reasoning for not incorporating cardiovascular work as well as resistance training for the majority of you guys? Why do you guys just weight train? What's the logic behind that? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm not criticizing, I'm just curious. Nothing really? No? Okay, cool. There's like a consistent program that you follow. Yeah? Okay, cool. Nutrition, let's go through your scores. C. C. Okay, man. E. Sorry, say again. E. E. Okay. E. E. Okay, cool. Medical testing. Uh, B. <coughs> C. B. B. C. C. Between B and C. Okay, cool. B as well. B. C. B. Okay, cool. Supplementation. D. Okay, cool. And finally, body composition. C. B. C. B, I think. Yeah. Uh, B. I pass about C. Cool. Have C as well. Uh, C. 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 I think E. 10. 10 to 12 for you. Okay, cool. Awesome. That points out some areas of improvement you guys need to make without much context. Of course, I'll expand upon medical testing, sleep, working, etc. Does that give you guys some areas for improvement initially? Gives you a bit of a blueprint as such? Yeah, gives you a little bit more context? Okay, cool. So I'm going to dive into the six components that I leverage to facilitate what I deem to be peak performance for my clients. We'll dive into sleep first, but what I'll do is I'll talk you through how I, I suggest you guys attack this if you want to, of course, improve your quality of health in a sequential manner, okay? What I've also got as well is, and I'll give you guys access to this, of course, is we recently launched a free course, and you guys can all get access to this as well. I used to sell this as just the product that I facilitated as opposed to one-to-one -to -one, and we moved away from that and I just do one-to-one -one, of course now. So you guys can dive into all of this in your own time of course and therefore learn how to actually improve your, your quality of health step by step based on these six components as well. Yeah. So in each subsection there's about 10 modules. Yeah, it took about nearly a year to produce the course. So you guys can go into it and again, we used to sell this for 10k. So you guys can go into that, of course, leverage that and it's, it's be predicated on the framework I'm about to show you now. That's for free. That's for free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense? 
that's all good, no worries. We launched it like three weeks ago and people are enjoying it greatly so far. So this is the process that I personally take my clients through. And of course, you guys can go through the exact same process in your own time with your own, of course, plan and protocol as well. Initially, we, we have a, a few things that I like you guys to tackle or first address. In order to determine your quality of health currently, you must use metric devices, right? To determine your quality of sleep, gut health assessments, blood work, etc. And therefore, for the clients I personally work, we provide an aura ring, gut health testing kits, constant blood glucose monitors, electrolytes, sleep supplementation, and basic tools like sleep light alarm clocks as well. I'll expand upon the utility of this in a second, okay, how you guys can do this. I also personally arrange for a blood test to be completed by my clients and for them to leverage personalized supplementation, which I'll expand upon as well. We introduce initial behavioral change practices and as a byproduct of that benefit from low hanging fruits. So really simple things to improve your quality of health. And I won't expand upon much more than that in this, in this slide as well. So to give you guys context, with the Aura Ring specifically that we provide for all clients, this is what the data looks like that we get on a daily basis from every client that I've worked with. And I've now, as I said, collected about 600 individuals data. I've seen loads of metrics from when everyone was first getting COVID, um, even leading up to when someone died as well, which is kind of crazy seeing their metrics. But um, I'll talk you guys really step by step to how you can improve them and what is a massive priority. Most of you don't have an Aura Ring. I'd encourage you all to get one pretty quickly so you can track your quality of sleep and improve that. I was speaking to Debbie earlier. She was saying that if she were to get an Aura Ring, perhaps she'd then be waking up and looking at it first thing upon waking. And if it was a bad night of sleep, she'd feel terrible that day as a byproduct looking at metrics. When you guys do get one, I recommend looking at it no earlier than like 2 p.m. Get the majority of deep work done first. Otherwise, if you open it first thing and it's a bad night of sleep metrics, you're gonna feel terrible subconsciously. Yeah, it's not great. Even if you feel good physically, subconsciously you'll be telling yourself, oh, it's gonna be a shit day, I won't get anything done. Yeah, that's not particularly positive at all. Okay, cool. So all these metrics will look pretty foreign to most people. So I'll dive through them step by step. As you can see here, this individual spent approximately eight hours in bed. Yeah, went to bed close to midnight and woke up at about 8 a.m. Okay, you can see in this section, they were awake for 31 minutes. Can you guys see that on screen pretty clearly? Yeah. Most individuals that haven't tracked their sleep quality before or worked on refining it are awake for about an hour to 90 minutes per night. It's pretty high. You're not consciously aware of it. Perhaps when you're tossing and turning, maybe you're aware of it somewhat then, but it's pretty high. And of course it's impacting your sleep quality pretty terribly. Yeah, so our first objective is to minimize that. And I'll talk you guys through how you can facilitate that as well. Yeah. We have another section here called REM sleep, which is responsible for cognitive function and also memory function as well. This is really important for you guys operating businesses and also emotional regulation. Yeah, so when you guys are sleep deprived, you slept maybe five hours that night. How many times do you guys wake up and feel like you can't perform cognitively? You can't focus, you're constantly procrastinating. How many of you guys experience that? Pretty often, right? That's because your REM sleep is pretty minimal that night. So perhaps you required 30 minutes to an hour tops. Yeah, and therefore it needs to be improved. Deep sleep, this is responsible for physical pain recovery, particularly from training and other physical stresses. Yeah, and light sleep, we're not paying too much attention to for now. Other metrics I can see here is average resting heart rate of the client that I work with. Yeah, okay, it's indicative of cardiovascular health. So arguably how fit they are. Go for it, bro. Okay, repeat one more time what the low REM, REM sleep uh, causes. <coughs> what low REM sleep causes? Yeah, yeah. Difficulty focusing, you have procrastination, you have difficulty recalling memories, etc. Yeah, basically everything associated towards your brain function. Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we can see average resting heart rate. This is really important. It's indicative of cardiovascular health. A lot of clients that I work with, as I said, have prioritized their business over their health and therefore their cardiovascular health is shit quite frankly, it's terrible. As a byproduct of that, of course, their quality of health isn't particularly great. They feel lethargic daily. So we need to improve that with introduction of cardio work as well. Yeah. We can also see other variables like respiratory rate, which is indicative arguably of whether or not an individual's mouth breathing or nose breathing when they sleep, which is also really important. Yeah. Other variables I can see are things like HRV. How many guys know what HRV means? Anyone aware of that? Heart rate. Variability. Yeah. So HRV is indicative of recovery and whether you're in a parasympathetic or sympathetic state, whether you're in fight or flight. Yes, yeah? so when you guys are really stressed with business, you're gonna be in a responsive state. Yeah, everything feels very urgent, your heart rate's accelerating quickly. As a byproduct, perhaps the next day you don't feel particularly great. Yeah, when you're in a resting state, your HRV will increase. So this individual's HRV is 50 MS. Most individuals HRV that are previously athletic, they do sports when they're a kid, their HRV is naturally higher, okay, however, if this person woke up the next day and their HRV was 30, that informs me that they're physically fatigued or perhaps psychologically fatigued and therefore need to pull back in some capacity. Yeah, either from training or perhaps from work and that of course how intensity they're approaching with work. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah? Any of you guys got questions about that or is that all pretty clear? clear. Yeah. Are all these details that you're sharing right now, are, these, are, they, are they also in the, the course? Yeah, man, everything's in there. 
Yeah, this is like a brief oversight, but everything's in there in, in immense detail. Okay, this is what a gut health test looks like. So none of you guys have done a gut health test before, have you? No. Okay, cool. I have no idea why it's formatting like this on the TV, but it's what it is. A gut health test, unfortunately, is a shit test. So you shit in the pad, they assess your quality of your microbiome, which are in your gut. Yeah, and therefore how you, you leverage food or digest food, okay? As you can see in this instance, one of my clients, Nick, what it provides us information for is which prebiotics and probiotics we should incorporate to improve the individual's quality of gut health and therefore manage digestive health issues like bloating or perhaps just stomach aches, for example, or also inflammation, which you experience as a result of food, yeah? So how many of you guys have had a burger, fries, or re-sugary food and felt really inflamed and you can't focus particularly well, yeah? Okay, cool. We're looking to mitigate that and improve quality of gut health with probiotics and prebiotics, yeah? Once we have that information, we can also then assess their nutrition based on these following food categories. Superfoods, enjoy, minimize, and avoid, okay? For the meal plans that I provide for the clients that I work with, and you guys can leverage this information yourself as well when you do the test, you want to, of course, negate all of the minimize and avoid food sources. These food sources can be deemed to be healthy, but for this individual specifically cause inflammation and digestive health issues, yeah? And therefore, in their meal plan, we remove them entirely. Make sense? The majority of the meal plan is predicated on enjoy and superfood. Yeah? Anyone got any questions on that so far? All pretty clear? Okay, I cool, nice. Question. What is like, what is actually your gut? Because they are also talking a lot about gut feeling and all those things, right? But what, what does a healthy gut actually mean? It's just a microbiome. It's the germs functioning in your gut, essentially. So in this instance, let's say, for example, you know when you guys have had really healthy food sources for like two weeks on end and you no longer crave bad quality food sources, some poor quality microbiome being killed off. Okay, so again, in this instance, we're looking to really leverage this and benefit from that. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, cool. With blood testing, um, I've actually asked a client for this already, this information, if he's happy for me to share this, and he is. This is one of my client's blood test results from very recently, so this was actually conducted last week. This is really, really important, not only from a perspective of personalizing supplementation, but also when it comes to determining quality of health. So risk of cardiovascular disease, even as, it, as young as 18, which is really, really young. Mitigation of inflammation, so cancerous cells, for example, um, and other variables as well, which I'll dive into step by step. So in this instance, as I said, this individual is 18, so really young. However, they, they put their hand up and say previously their quality of health wasn't particularly great. Um, and as a byproduct of that, that's reflected pretty clearly in their blood work. So I'll show you a few markers which are pretty, not concerning, but something which we need to be aware of, and we can go through it from there. Okay, so first and foremost, in this section, and when you guys do this, I can send you a PDF of all the blood parameters you should be tested for. It's in the course as well. Yeah, it's 50 parameters. It gives you an indication first of cardiovascular health. Yes, yeah, so don't worry too much about the numbers for now. This individual's cardiovascular health is pretty much within range. However, if these numbers were without range, it would inform me that they're at risk of cardiovascular disease, either from a hereditary perspective or just based on their lifestyle habits as well. Yeah, so this is really comprehensive information that you guys can acquire from a really simple blood test. You guys can get this pulled every three months is what I personally suggest. And you can also personalize your supplementation on this as well, yeah? The, per the way I facilitate that personally, or the way that I leverage it, is from a company called Bionic. Uh, they're based in London, but they also operate in Europe and also Dubai as well. And they personalize your supplementation formula based on your specific blood test results, right? So for example, that individual severe that I showed on screen, he's very deficient in vitamin D, massively so, because he wasn't actually exposing himself to natural sunlight very frequently at all. And his diet previously was terrible, meaning he felt pretty lethargic on the verge of, do you guys know what anemia is? You guys heard of that? No. Okay, so like uh, someone that's vegan may be anemic because they don't consume iron, they look pretty pale, they look pretty thin, not particularly good. Yeah, they look pretty ill. The individual was on the verge of that, on the cusp of that, because they weren't supplementing appropriately and their diet was terrible. As a byproduct, their vitamin D intake from their personalized supplementation would be perhaps double of what mine is. Does that make sense? So the formula is, is really specifically personalized to you. Yeah, does that make sense for you guys? Yeah. yeah? Do you guys want to dive in more depth into, your, into the blood test or? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, cool, nice one. I don't know why everything's so small on screen. <laughs> I've no idea how to expand that, to be fair. Let's put it all in bold, see if that helps. Nope. <laughs> Let's go title. Okay, cool. So in this instance, we've got a few marks we'll pay attention to, and I'll go through them step by step. I'll try and make it easier for myself to read as well. Um, this is the information that I sent back to the individual that I'm working with, and of course, it's something which we'll pay attention to moving forward as well. So firstly, you can see P PCV, okay? In this instance, it's slightly abnormal, slightly over range, okay? It's most likely because this individual was dehydrated. Yeah, but as you guys can see from the notes, in cases where PCV is very high, it's indicative that red blood cell count is high, meaning you could have lung or heart disease. You consume alcohol excessively, you smoke, you have liver or kidney disease, you are obese. 
it's drug hormone induced. So for example, you're taking growth hormone or testosterone if you're a bodybuilder in Dubai, um, or there's a likelihood you have a cancerous tumor. So not particularly great. Yeah, and again, this individual is only 18. So it could just be because they were dehydrated. And again, I've only done one blood test with them, so I can't really clarify this yet. But of course, if it's something which is a reoccurring issue, then we need to pay attention to it. Yeah. Other variables like RBC, that's just cause of dehydration, so we don't need to pay attention to that either. Um, MCMHC, as we can see here also, is actually slightly under range, okay? Indicates slash can indicate iron deficiency or anemia, yeah? And again, that's taken care of by the individual's personalized supplementation and the increased intake of red meat as well. Yeah, makes sense to you guys so far? There's a huge array of marks we can go through, and a lot of them, of course, I'm sure you guys don't necessarily know what they mean necessarily, but we'll go through them step by step. E dot S dot R is also elevated. It's tested to help diagnose conditions that cause inflammation. High test results may be from a condition that causes inflammation such as arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, kidney disease, infection, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune diseases, heart disease, certain cancers as well. Yeah, so uh, I don't wanna make this too deep or personal. My dad personally died of cancer. Had he perhaps done this blood work earlier on, it could have prevented that or mitigated it in some, in some realm. Yeah, it would have been beneficial for him to have that information, yeah. Of course, in this instance, I also do my blood work frequently to test for any inflammation markers as well, which can be indicative of that. So does my brother, because it could be hereditary. It's also important to pay attention to. Yeah, and I'm sure cancer's touched the lives of you guys as well. Go for it. Uh, would you recommend us now or to go to the hospital and take a blood test? So you, you, you most likely have to do it privately. Yeah, so if you go to a hospital, I don't know how it works in the Netherlands, if it's private or if it's like a, a national system, I'm not too sure. Okay, cool. If you go to the NHS, which is like a, a public system in the UK, you can't get this blood work done. So you go to a clinic, it's like 150, 200 pounds. It's not particularly expensive. Yeah. You just have to show them the PDF with the parameters in advance and confirm they're happy to do that. Yeah. Because some people can be assholes and they're like, no, it's too detailed, which is terrible. Like, so about the healthcare system, this makes no sense, quite frankly. Yeah. We can also see other stuff as well, um, like blood glucose fasting, which can be indicative of diabetes if the individual's blood glucose is out range. Go for it, man. Would you recommend, would you recommend for us to do that? Yeah, straight away. Yeah, I'll do it every three months, particularly given that you guys are running businesses and therefore perhaps have capital to invest in it. I would really make sure you do that. Yeah, in terms of personalized supplementation, you can benefit from that on a daily basis in terms of how you feel physically as well, which is really important. But in terms of mitigating any risk or just getting an actual understanding of your quality of health, this is really important. So. When I asked you guys earlier if you deem yourselves to be healthy, a lot of that was subjective opinion, based on fitness, based on nutrition, for example, not based on metric data. This gives you really clear insight, yeah, which is really beneficial, yeah. I'd also encourage all of you guys to get your family done frequently as well. I think it's really important if you wanna take care of them as well. Yeah, should be a priority, of course. There's loads of other stuff as well. Um, of course, I could refer to uric acid readings, urea. In this instance, that can be indicative of, of liver cancer as well, which is quite threatening. It's quite terrifying, to be fair, for some individuals. Um, I've seen, in this instance, one of the clients I worked with, he was taking steroids prior to work with me, and um, his uric acid reading was really high, which is indicative of the fact that his kidneys and livers just weren't functioning properly at all. And could be early onset kidney or liver disease, which is kind of crazy from steroid use. It can also be as a byproduct of bad lifestyle habits as well. Yeah. Other variables as well, um, folate, for example, which is indicative of low vitamin B12, which is, again, you can supplement for or consume from red meat. These things are really important. Yeah, particularly if you guys lock yourselves away in a room to work all day, like most of us do is really important to pay attention to, yeah? And again, like vitamin D, like I referenced earlier, in this instance, this client specifically, it's because he's, he's 18, he's done very well financially, but he's worked his ass off clearly, hasn't exposed himself to natural sunlight, which of course would benefit him from a vitamin D perspective, hasn't supplemented, his diet's been all over the place. Make sense to you guys? Yeah. yeah? And have you guys got any questions on that so far? Or is that all pretty clear? Go for it, man. Um, yeah, I'm like curious, like we talked about, for example, the hour ring, when you like see your, um like your data on the ring yeah. uh, in the morning and you feel terrible. Uh, can there like be a chance when you see your blood work test results and maybe there are like concerning results that you're maybe going to get a little bit negative in your head and maybe you get uh, consequences there for your, 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 your work for work? Uh, perhaps, man. But also arguably if your metrics, if your blood data is inferring that you're not particularly healthy, you should address that pretty quickly as well. So would you rather the latter consequence of not addressing it or the short term? It's, it's a choice really. Okay. So it's like you have, you have the results and you can immediately take action and that will even help you to prevent maybe some diseases or stuff. In the yeah, world. exactly, man, exactly. And most readings that I get from clients aren't particularly abnormal. They're just slightly above ranges. And it depends on the quality of health of the person, yeah? So the individual that I showed you specifically isn't particularly in shape, hasn't really done much exercise for ages, has eaten terribly, hasn't slept particularly well and smoked all the time. Yes, yeah, so that's an example of really bad lifestyle habits. Yeah, 
And again, they just work their ass off to grow, right? And that's why, of course, we need to pay attention to that metrics now. Yeah. Again, they're not particularly out of range. It's something we address. Go for it, bro. Uh, do you, um, when you have like a bad result in your hourly, uh, do you uh, adjust your day based on how you yeah, good question. So personally, beyond a certain point, I've been using Aura now for about eight years. I don't leverage it that frequently anymore because I'm, of course, aware of how to improve my quality of sleep now. For individuals that I work with initially, it's really important to reinforce choices with metrics, right? However, to answer your question specifically, um, let's say, for example, last night, I didn't have a particularly good night of sleep because I got here late, luggage was lost, etc. right? It's like six hours. I'll typically fast for longer just to ensure I feel okay. Otherwise, if I have a heavy meal, if it's a lunch, even if it's like fats and proteins, for example, I feel pretty lethargic and pretty shit. Yeah, so what I typically do is extend my fasting window to mitigate that. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can also incorporate more activity. Just walking between work blocks is a really basic one as well. More sunlight exposure, cold water exposure as well, of course, will give you a massive rush and a kick if you need that to benefit you. But of course, you may not have access to a cold plunge all the time. So walking is the better option or there's more frequent activity. Yeah, go for it. That's a good question. It depends on if I've consistently been sleep deprived or not. So if it's consistent, then perhaps no. And it depends on my recovery and how I feel physically also. If it's a one-off, then yeah, I definitely would train for sure. Because I know my recovery hasn't been impeded too significantly. But also, I, I think most individuals have a misconception about training fasted. It depends on personal preference, of course. You, you can perform very well training fasted as well as you would done if you were fed. Because of course your glycogen stores, if you guys are consuming carbohydrates, and most of you do, right? None of you guys just have keto diet or anything. No. Yeah. Your glycogen stores aren't depleted, so you can definitely perform well physically even if you're training fasted. So you could get up and go straight to the gym and then crack on with work if you wanted to do so without any negative consequence. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I have a uh, more detailed question, I think. Uh, how would you recommend for me, because like on a, on a yeah, like monthly basis, I go out uh, like I think two times with friends because I'm still student. So how would you recommend for me to keep, to keep feeling productive because that's especially day after effect i feel really lazy <laughs> like, I, I really wanted to, to keep scrolling on my phone and like, yeah, yeah. like eat consume you know so and I, I don't afterwards i feel terrible about doing that so how would you recommend to keep feeling productive after uh, such a night out yeah well arguably the next day you will suffer the consequences it's hard to rectify that of course and use any hacks to, to mitigate that one thing you should be aware of is of course impeding your circadian rhythm and what I mean by that is how consistent you are with your sleep start and end times, yeah? So for example, if I refer to this client's metrics here, you can see they went to bed at 12, then 11.39, 11.43, 12.17, it's all within about half an hour range, right? Which means that as a byproduct, their circadian rhythm is well aligned and therefore hormonally, they're producing the correct, the correct sleep hormones and also wake hormones. So you know when you guys wake up and you feel like foggy, lethargic first thing upon waking and it's because you've been waking up a little bit later or earlier than normal, that's because you're secreting cortisol and melatonin at the same time. Melatonin being a sleep hormone, cortisol being a stress hormone to wake you up, and, that, and they're clashing that you feel shit as a byproduct. Your blood glucose can also drop, yeah? But to answer your question, man, if I was going out, I'd personally wake up, no matter what time I got back that night, I'd wake up at the exact same time I normally do, just to make sure that's consistent, even though I'd be sleep deprived the next day and I know I'd be sacrificing that, to ensure that that night I still feel tired at the correct time. Does that make sense? Whereas if you have a lie-in, the likelihood of you going to bed at the correct time that day is out the window. You probably go to bed at like 2 a.m. or something because you've been in bed till midday. Make sense? That makes sense. Go for it. Um, what's your opinion about like waking up early? Because sometimes I got just this inner voice saying to me, okay, now it's time to kill it, you know, and wake up a little bit more early. So then I wake up at six, for instance, and do that for a couple of weeks. But then if you go back to your regular schedule, then you're still like messing around with those times that you go to bed and yeah. you sleep. And same for me with traveling, right? And time zones. For sure, yeah. I mean, of course, traveling through different time zones will have a massive impediment to your sleep quality. So just so you guys are aware, one night of poor quality sleep or inconsistent timing can impact your sleep for about seven days afterwards. From a circadian rhythm perspective, it's huge. People don't really aware of that. So we've been told as kids that you can have a lie in and recover from sleep. That's not the case. If anything, you're just shooting yourself in the foot, right? In this instance, in terms of waking up early, bro, um, it depends on your quality of sleep metrics, man. So if you're going to bed at, let's say, for example, 10 and waking up at 6, great. If your sleep quality is looking good. Other individuals are more inclined to go, be go to bed later, myself included. I personally go to bed a little bit later than that. And that's because I personally feel better as a byproduct of doing that. 
I've got clients like I was re referring to earlier, like Bass, for example, he goes to bed like two or 3 a.m. every day. I mean, he's operating a million dollar per year, a month per business. Yeah, and that's perfectly fine for him. It's just based on his personal preferences. His partner doesn't do that. His partner wakes up a lot earlier, right? It's just depending on, of course, their preference. But the most important thing is sleep duration and of course, quality, not timing. Yeah, timing is subjective based on the person. So how many of you guys are like a morning person? How many of you guys are a night person? Let's go morning people first. Yeah, okay, cool, night owls. Yeah. I'll be up. Okay, cool. I changed from late in the evening to getting up early. Yeah, you definitely can do as well, based on tech use, stress, etc. Yeah, it, it depends on those variables also. But yeah, you want to lean into typically towards what you're more inclined to, to lean into. Yeah, don't don't try and push against it. You can, of course, adjust your circadian rhythm and wake up earlier, like Yisk was saying. You can do that. But the reality is most individuals then reverse back to doing what they were doing previously, like perhaps you've experienced as well. And it, that's fine. Yeah, I understand that most individuals want to get up early and they're motivated to work, etc. But it may not be the best thing to do. It just depends on the person. Yeah. Any other questions so far? Was that all pretty clear? One more question. Go, man. Uh, for the vitamin, for example, the client before, like uh, let's say that they don't go out and they don't expose themselves to the sun, would the vitamin D be exactly the same? Like, would that make up for the for the diet? No. It's still better. The, the it's still better with natural sunlight exposure. For and sure. Is it like massive or is it like? It'd be pretty significant. For sure, there'll still be deficiency if they just supplemented. They'd still be deficient if, of course, they increase their iron intake with red meat consumption as well. That'll benefit them as well as vitamin D and also sunlight exposure. And, and sunlight, like that, is direct sun or even if it's cloudy, like the same? Yeah, even indirect, man. I mean, this individual specifically works for hours and hours and end. Yeah, I mean, their step count was like 400 steps per day. Like they were never getting outside, right? So that's just an example of that. It's a pretty severe case. Whereas most of you guys walk around, right? And like get outside and yeah, okay, then you, you should be fine. But again, it depends on the person. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, all of us are based in Europe, right? So in the winter, it's pretty bleak. So your vitamin D will perhaps be more deficient then. So supplementing more appropriately at that time is really important, right? But if you guys take like generic supplements, you have no idea how much to take, when to take it, why, which products are best, etc. So that's why I don't recommend that. Unless, of course, it's sleep supplementation, you can benefit from like L-theanine, magnesium, etc. All of these things are referenced in the course as well. So you guys can dive into that. Zinc as well, magnesium, these things can all benefit you. And of course, there's no blood work you do to determine how much you take of them. You just take them and as a byproduct, you'll feel better for your sleep quality. Yeah. I then personally proceed with the testing of all clients. So we analyze all of their data. We put things together, of course, like their sleep protocol. So timings, and we hold them accountable to that. Meal plans, of course, their personalized supplementation is delivered as well. We also work on their workout protocols. And again, for you guys, most of you guys just resistance train. I think it's really important you guys do address your cardiovascular health as well. This individual specifically has only got a resistance training program currently because they were previously weren't fit at all and therefore we're taking it step by step. But incorporating cardio works really important. So what I'd encourage most of you guys to do is weight train three to four, perhaps five times per week, depending on personal preference. Yeah, and of course your time availability. Three is absolutely fine, five is absolutely fine. Depends how, to, how serious you wanna take it in terms of building a physique, strength progressions, etc. And also incorporate cardio work on your rest days. One session being aerobic, like a light jog for 45 minutes, like bite session, etc. Yeah, you're keeping your heart rate at 150 BPM. If you can track that with an Apple Watch, whatever it may be, heart rate monitor. The second session being anaerobic, so intervals and sprints. That'll improve your cardiovascular health massively. It'll improve your resistance training and you'll feel better day to day. Yeah, so again, I would massively encourage you guys to do that. Also, of course, sauna exposure will get your heart rate up frequently and that will improve your cardiovascular health as well. Yeah, so I personally spend about half an hour per day in the sauna as well. Yeah, go for it, man. I have a question, because like I used to have an Apple Watch, but I noticed that a lot of radiation comes from the Apple Watch. EMFs, yeah. When, you know, whenever you're getting messages in, so like I, uh, I, I did this, like I, I sold it because of that reason, like is there any other uh, devices to measure that? Yeah, I mean, you can, you can use just like a basic heart rate monitor. You can connect to certain watches that won't produce EMF, or you can just, of course, put your Apple Watch on, on sleep, for example, or do not disturb, and therefore, of course, you're not getting messages, etc. cetera. So does the EMF not like uh, mess up with your... Yeah, it can, be, it can be detrimental, but also most of us are surrounded by tech constantly. So our EMF exposure is pretty high, let alone the use of an Apple Watch. And most people like, yeah, they, they for example, are scared of utilizing their phone or whatever it may be. EMF exposure from tech alone in this building would be pretty high, so, and also suburban areas. So yeah, another variable. Yeah, anything else for you guys? Any questions so far? All good? Okay, cool, so you complete testing and as a byproduct, you guys can improve those variables yourself step by step, yeah? And of course, then you, as a byproduct of having that information in plan, you can then actually refine those things, yeah? A lot of this information, of course, you can find online as well. Go through the course and you can refine it step by step through that. But I encourage all of you guys to go through it step by step based on this process. 
I, I deliver over 12 weeks and for some clients I've worked with them since 2019 now. And again, you guys have a, a much bigger opportunity to work on that depending on, of course, your, your preference to prioritize your health. But you do want to go through the step by step. Yeah, so address what your goals are first, test and then optimize as a byproduct you'll feel much better daily. Yeah, makes sense? Okay, cool. I, quickly, cause from the masterminds that I've done previously, a lot of individuals that I was speaking to had questions about the clients I've worked with and perhaps what was different about them. Have you guys got any questions about what they did on a daily basis or how they operated? Because most of them, I've either been with them in person for extended periods of time, lived with them for periods of time or traveled out to see them. Have you guys got any questions about that at all in terms of how they've done certain things? Yeah, like what were the overall differences that you saw? Uh, first, extreme discipline for substantial periods of time. So for example, like Eman, when I first started working with him, probably the most disciplined person I've ever met, quite frankly, in that period. Barely any social life, which arguably isn't necessarily the right thing to do. It depends on, on preference and how you perform. But he'd say no to everything other than the variables that are most important to him with work. He would wake up religiously at six, we'd go to the gym and train, he'd fast until about two, get all of his deep work done, then do team meetings after that. So things which require communication. But deep work was from like 8 a.m. till two. So he got a lot done in that time period, which was great. And then he'd relax a little bit more towards the latter end of the day. And he'd rinse and repeat that for like 12 months blocks initially. Of course, now there's more flexibility, I'm sure, because he's got such a huge team and how many individuals can work for him. But yeah, that was, that's how disciplined he was. It was pretty obscene to be fair. He was totally on top of all metrics associated towards his health. He was obsessed with all health things. Brought on board a detox coach as well, which was pretty interesting to see. But yeah, that's one example. Um, I think a lot of these guys have realized early on that they are smart, like everyone in this room is, but they appreciate that in order to really outcompete us guys as an example, they do need to really take this shit seriously. And they do all do that. And they take massive pride in that as well. Like Cole, for example, when I first started working with him, at one point I was kind of like, this is a bit pointless because he has everything dialed in so severely. It was so extreme how much work he'd done previously and how much information he looked to acquire and how many experts he'd spoken to. I think I was like the 12th coach he worked with. And that wasn't because he was ruthless, it was because he wanted to just acquire as much information as possible from one person, move on to the next. And it was pretty obsessive for sure. Yeah. Any of you guys got any other questions about that? The interesting thing as well that I thought I'd mention was their like interpersonal relationships. A lot of these guys are pretty brutal with their interpersonal relationships. Like in terms of friends and girlfriends as well, they kind of have set times for that and they're very, I wouldn't say restricted, but it's very much managed and scheduled and their life is very much regimented. All of these guys, to the extent where it's like verging on autistic for sure, but that's the way they operate. I'd argue most of these guys pretty much are autistic in some, I think probably all are somehow, right? Um, autistic, but also a lot of these guys had um, huge egos and I'm not necessarily saying that in like a negative way. A lot of them just massively believed in themselves and would only support themselves and no one else. And I think that benefited them hugely because they believed they could achieve whatever they wanted to at a very early age and of course have facilitated that as well. To the extent where you could call it like narcissistic and it's not particularly great being around all the time, for sure. But these guys are, have done insane things, all of them, and they have all have that same personality trait, which is really fascinating as well. There's, not, there's nothing crazy that these guys are doing that you guys aren't doing or that anyone else isn't doing. It's just they, they stay committed to the same variables that of course they know, the simple things that will facilitate success, keep it basic. Like we were speaking about Bass earlier. Yeah. Like Bass is a clear example of that, you and I both agree. Like he keeps the basics of basics. And we were surprised by, I think Marco said this as well, like when he went to see him, like how he was working, he was kind of like chilled out on a sofa. You'd assume that someone doing that much revenue per month to be like in a kind of like office, sophisticated team around him, etc. Very laid back, very, very laid back. Other individuals are very tightly strung and are very fixated on the exact details. He's not, it just depends on the person for sure. Yeah. Any of you guys got any other questions? All good? I got one more question. Like I noticed that if I wake up a little bit, bit later then my REM sleep is also better. Does yeah. it have to do with my, like the type that I am or? Same for myself. Yeah, yeah most, most male clients I work with. Yeah, typically the female clients I work with wake up earlier and their sleep quality is fine. Um, to show you an example of that as well, like with regards to your REM sleep, you acquire 75% of your REM sleep and the last 25% of your sleep duration mainly. In this instance, that's a bit of an anomaly, but you guys can see that the majority of REM sleep is acquired beyond this hour here. Yeah, if that person would sleep five hours per night, six hours per night, etc., their REM sleep would be negated pretty significantly. Yeah, so again, that's, this is another reason as to why it's so important. And that's why, of course, Messing around with your sleep starts and then times every week isn't a great idea either. Yeah, you've got to stay consistent with that and you'll reap the benefits of it. Everyone? Uh, what would be a more sufficient factor in, in how you feel, like sleep or food? Sleep. Sleep? For sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you manage your sleep cycle like really good, uh, like food still matters, but yeah, of course you still it, feel 
Yeah, still a massive, massive importance. It depends on, of course, your quality of nutrition and how you've approached that previously. I'll use an example here for one of my clients in Dubai. Um, in this instance, you guys can see that he consumes the same food every single day. That's based on his personal preference and, of course, his gut health work we've done as well. You guys can see in this instance, meal one's consumed at 2 p.m. It's predominantly fats and proteins, yeah? Meal two is more carbohydrate dense, okay? Not particularly huge, it's just a little bit more carbohydrate dense. And of course, he has a snack after meal one as well, so that's approaching just before his, his last meal of the day as well. It's the same every single day. Yeah, and some individuals really enjoy that, other individuals don't, it depends on their preference. Yeah. I've got other clients that want a different meal every single meal for the day, it just depends on the person. So, but you guys can see that we, we've developed that based on his protein, carbohydrates, fats intakes. So he knows exactly what he's consuming, when to consume it. And from a nutrition perspective, like I was referring to, I'd advocate you guys all adhere to something similar. Okay, it might be hard initially, of course, both from a craving perspective and also in terms of getting all your carbohydrates in, in one meal. And therefore you can have snacks, like in this instance, he's got fruit like pineapple, dried mango, blueberries, etc., to account for his lack of carbohydrates in his meals. But this is what I'd, I'd massively recommend as a formula. Go for it, bro. <laughs> Of course it is, man. Depending on, again, like based on your blood test results, you can see deficiencies. So if there's a deficiency and you've been eating the same thing consistently, of course you want to address that deficiency and add something in or perhaps remove something. So yeah, of course, if you're doing testing work, then you, you can have clarity on that. If you're not doing testing work, you have no fucking clue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just my mom always told me like, oh, you can't eat the same thing every day. Uh, bro, all parents say that. Yeah, yeah, all parents say that. <laughs> For sure, in the same way that we've deemed certain food sources to be healthy, but in actuality, they're causing issues in your gut and also inflammation, right? So it's not great. Go for it, man. Uh, so you say it's very important to uh, keep the same uh, phase, like sleep, uh, wake up at 8, uh, go to bed at uh, 11. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if I go, for example, uh, two or three days in a week, I go straight to the office, and two days I wake up more early to, gym, to go to the, to the gym and then go to work. Would you say that? It depends how much earlier you're waking up. Is it more than an hour you're waking up early or? Yeah. Okay, yeah, then that will impede your sleep quality. Okay, so better to maybe, yeah, work up after work? For sure, okay. yeah. But also there's, there's a caveat to that as well. It depends on the person also, because if you're doing a really intense workout and your heart rate's elevated, you're, you'll, you'll be plagued by or fueled by adrenaline also to an extent. And also your heart rate's accelerated as your, as your body temperature. That's not great for sleep. So if you're working out in the evening, you want to make sure it's four or five hours prior to bed, if possible. If not, then it is what it is. But if possible, that's great. Yeah, because otherwise you might be buzzing post-workout and you can't sleep, and that's not great. And also if you consume food afterwards and your heart rate's already elevated, again, that's not particularly great for digestive health either. Yeah, go for it. For example, if you sleep later on Friday and wake up later on Saturday, yeah. you wouldn't recommend it? No, not at all, man. Yeah, you, you can't catch up for sleep at all. You need to be very consistent with that. An example, like in this instance, this is again, one of my clients here, Kim. If I were to, if he'd be inconsistent, his sleep metrics would look nothing like this. And it'd be like a couple of days that could have an impact. I think there's a couple of days back when he was on holiday recently that you could see that as well. So you can see he's within an hour here. Then this night, it was 1.19 a.m., which isn't hugely bad. It's only like two hours, uh, an hour and a bit beyond. But still, that would have had a uh, ramification on his sleep quality. That's like 7 p.m. I have no idea what the fuck he was doing that day. <laughs> Must have gone to like a festival or a party or something. Yeah, so again, it's really important to be consistent. This individual is pretty meticulous with it. Um, other clients aren't so much. It just depends on how severe they want to push it really. But yeah, it, it's massively encouraged, man, for sure. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. Um, so I have the question regarding Uman. Like yeah, when he was at his like hardcore training period, uh, like the 12, 12 months or one you mentioned before, um, did he have any social life or? Very limited. Because yeah. I think, does social life actually like impact your overall health? Yes, it does, right? Yeah, again, I'm, I'm not necessarily conducing that or condoning that. I think it depends on the person. Right. Like he's a massive advocate of monk mode, as it's now been known as, and is massively advocated online. I personally disagree with the, the whole premise of monk mode in terms of limiting social life, friends, family, etc. I think it's quite important. For me personally, it is as well. Yeah. It just depends on personal preference, man. But what, what I meant specifically by that point was he was just very meticulous with his scheduling for everything else, right. not just the personal stuff. Yeah, got it. Because like, I, I thought of like, because when you're moving to like, doing a monk mode in another city where you know nobody and you're just focusing on work, that impacts your health also, right? And the goal is to have like, a healthy body and inevitably it will, I think, like my opinion, a good social life will also like help you in your business, right? 
But it also depends on your perspective. Like a lot of these guys, I think would argue very much so. I think Iman being one of the advocates for that, that throughout the period of growing a business, your mental health won't necessarily be a priority, won't be prioritized. It's something where in the same way that when you work out in the gym, you're in pain. The same thing applies to business in terms of period of growth. So I think personally that was perspective he took and he very much lived by that for a certain period of time, for sure. Other individuals disagree with that and they want to maintain their emotional health at all times and mental well-being. It just depends on the person, for sure. But these guys, I would say they don't really put themselves first in terms of their quality of mental health. I've witnessed that firsthand from a lot of these guys. And it sometimes it bites them in the ass, like they have kind of breakdowns for a period of time. Other times it doesn't, it just depends on the person. Like Cole, for example, he was working like 14 hours a day, every minute regimented. His schedule was crazy. They do that for six days a week. And he, he's, I, didn't, I didn't think he felt particularly happy, but from his perspective, he was fulfilled. So yeah, it just depends on the person. And I can't really comment on whether or not he's happy. It's just my thoughts from the calls I was having with him. So yeah, go for him. Do you wear your ring, do you say makeup or just off? Yeah, I hate wearing jewelry, bro. So yeah, I wouldn't, I don't wear my ring at all during the day. There's no need, it tracks your steps. If you have an Apple Watch or an iPhone, it tracks your steps anyway. So yeah, not the end of the world. Is go it for him. literally a ring? It is literally a ring, mate. Mine's gold, so. Oh, really? Yeah, I've got a, a black one upstairs. Yeah, you can get shiny ones, you can get like matte black. And then yeah. tracks your sleep. Yeah, it tracks your sleep, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool, it's cool. They're, they're much more accurate data sources than a whoop. You must, most of you guys must have seen a whoop, like the whoop band being, yeah. Uh, whoop data isn't particularly accurate. It looks really cool as a product. And of course it's like shiny object syndrome. It's a sick thing, but the accuracy of data is pretty crap. I've compared both for like two years at a time once one point that, that whoop data was really inaccurate. Yeah. Go for it. How expensive is uh, Like 300? No, it's now it's four to 500. Four to 500 now? I think it's a bit. It's a new one. It's our 2.0, I guess. Or like even. I think it, no, it depends on what. It depends if you get the heritage or another ring. Yeah, the gold one was more expensive. Yeah, yeah, it actually is. No, there's two sizes. The sizes don't matter at all in terms of shape. So you guys can see on here. There's a heritage. And there's another one. You just don't need it. It's not loading for some reason. Yeah, it's like a heritage shape, and there's another one. You don't need the more expensive one, it does exactly the same thing. Okay. Billy, I'm curious, like, um, for instance, because I, I remember that Iman was also talking about this in one podcast and he mentioned it on his IG that he was also like kind of depressed for a short period of time, or at least not, not feeling well at all. Like, because you work with so many, so many people on high level, like what would you say if you could give them like one and five, what would you say would be like always the word they are using, like a great balance that you can still push to the limit, but that you still like keep things on the be, be below the surface, if that makes sense. Well, one of the causal factors for that and for a lot of the clients I work with is previous trauma in their life when they were kids I, that they, they don't address. So it's, it motivates them to work hard. For example, like in spite of someone or because of an insecurity, whatever it may be, but a lot of the time it's something which they build their identity on and as a byproduct they like kind of have a breakdown because of it and that may have happened in this instance that you're referring to it, it did happen as a byproduct of that because it wasn't addressed and then when it was addressed everything dialed in again he felt better for it but yeah I, I personally did how many of you guys have done like emdr therapy or anything like that do you know what it is yeah it's, it's really cool though so you get put into a state of almost like dreaming state um, based on the frequency of beat they play. It's kind of crazy. And you can see visually every memory of yours which was traumatic, which you perhaps haven't really thought of or thought of in depth. So it removes that from it. So a lot of these guys start to do therapies like that. I've done that myself as well. It's probably one of the most beneficial things I've done in my life to remove uh, perhaps like insecurities or certain things that plagued my identity before. And yeah, remove the emotion from it entirely. It's, it's really positive. A lot of these guys do that. Go for it. You, you, you went like to the therapist and the major is like, Sleeping, you saw you really were not, not quite, man. So, yeah, so the therapist you can do in person or online, you have to buy a particular headset where it plays a frequency of beat. It's really weird. It feels like you're like tripping out when they play it for a certain period. It takes like 10 minutes to kick in. Then, after that, you can recall memories which perhaps you wouldn't have recalled previously. It's very odd. It's What's a very odd problem? experience. Yeah. EMDR therapy. A lot of these guys also do ayahuasca. I've not done ayahuasca. I will do at some point, but a lot of these guys do ayahuasca and they, they benefit from it massively as well. Because again, it removes the ego from whatever they're experiencing. And a lot of times it's petting up ego or, as I said, insecurity that perhaps leads to like a breakdown at some point.
Go for it. Ayahuasca doesn't always get rid of the ego, though, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, no, it definitely doesn't. Yeah, no, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, a lot of these guys still have massive egos, man. It's not a fix. Yeah, yeah, it can help. But people think it's like a one-time thing and you're done and you're, you're good. It's like, and they say that, they come out and they're like, oh, I feel like totally different. And then like six months later, they're doing the same thing. It's like, all right, come on now. <laughs> yeah. And you guys going to go for it, bro. Yeah, um, so for me, I'm curious about your opinion on blue light blockers. So some people say they love it and they need it to sleep. And some people say that it's like complete bullshit. How it depends on the person entirely. These are blue light blocking lenses. These are actually prescription lenses with blue light in them. So I personally use them. Um, it depends on the individual. There, there's benefit to some individuals and not so much for others. I've got clients who fall asleep watching TV. And like, if you read anything online, they'd be like, don't do that. Their sleep quality is immaculate. Right, it just depends on the person. They find it relaxing, calming, it, it depends entirely. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. Um, you have ruminating thoughts and night associated towards business. Do you guys have that? When you're falling asleep, you're thinking about work, what to do next, etc. <laughs> yeah, like everyone, everyone can, right? Like obviously one way to mitigate that is by doing like a brain dump or planning the next day, of course, which are basic things. But a lot of these guys just like to unwind by watching Netflix in bed, like honestly, and their sleep's immaculate. And it just depends. And th they do use blue light blocking glasses and a thing called Flux, which you download on Chrome for free as well, which mitigates the, the light as well. But um, yeah, it depends on the person, man, entirely. The most important thing is sunlight exposure, really. And how can you like uh, uh, track that in your, can you track it in your aura, like somewhere in the metrics where you see that it has like, uh, some influence on your Yeah, for sure. In the same way that when we did science experiments at school when we were kids, just remove a variable or add a variable. Yeah, so just do the same thing, like a week of sleep with consistent timings with blue light blockers, a week without, just see how, see how it responds. Okay. Yeah, do it that way. Got it. Yeah. Nice, guys. Go for it. And should you always wake up with the alarm or like if you get used to like going to bed and waking up at the same time, you more or less still wake up within a range that can be like 30 minutes. That's a good question, man. So this individual, as you can see, their heart rate decelerates towards the middle of the night and then starts to accelerate as they wake up. That's without an alarm, that's natural. That's because their circadian rhythms align and they're consistent with their timing, so their body knows when to wake up. Yeah, which is great. Other individuals that aren't consistent with their timing, of course, will need an alarm because they just don't wake up naturally until like 11 a.m. and they shoot themselves in the foot with that. Uh, this individual's got that dialed in. So when you guys have that dialed in and an indicator of that is your heart rate, if it, uh, gets to the lowest point in the middle of the night and then starts to accelerate as you wake up, that infers your circadian rhythm is well aligned and you can wake up automatically, yeah? If that's not the case and it's zigzagging all over the place, which happens quite a lot when I first start working with people, then it means that your circadian rhythm is not aligned and you're gonna feel pretty crap waking up, yeah? And when you wake up, like, uh, with the alarm, should you wake up, like, as soon as you hear it? Or, like, 10 or 15 minutes, is that gonna make like... Totally up to you, man. Okay. Has no impediment to your, your quality of anything. Yeah, it's totally up to you. I, I argue psychologically it's better to get out of bed straight away, of course, rather than scrolling on your phone for like 10, 15 minutes, which no, no, a lot of us are guilty of. You're the, the alarm and then you just like stay in bed with your eyes closed for 10 more minutes. Oh, no, that's not great. Okay. That's not great at all. The reason being is because at this instance, when his heart rate's accelerating... <laughs> 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 Only reason is because you see this guy's heart rate's accelerating, yeah? That means his body's flushing cortisol through his system. Cortisol being a stress hormone, right? So when you guys went through the cold, cold plunge, cortisol's flushing through your system and you feel like a high from it, yeah? If you guys are secreting cortisol, you go back to sleep, you start secreting melatonin, they clash and you're gonna feel fucked up for like an next hour or two. You're gonna feel terrible and that's why perhaps your morning work isn't as good as it could be because you went back to bed for a little bit, you start secreting melatonin again and you're shooting yourself in the foot. Make sense? Yeah. That's what you guys feel like when you're in a, a, a lay-in and you feel worse than you did the day before. That's why. It's the same example there. Yeah. I'm curious with all the um, with all these supplements, right? That you could use to to optimize your health. Like, I'm just curious on your perspective and, and vision on this. Like, um, if you look at life and like how to be the most healthy person, is it? that people nowadays to take all these supplements to be, um, to basically, um, how do you say it? To make up with all the things that they are not doing that they used to do when like, we, uh, we lived like a couple of thousand years ago that they were more outside, more in the nature and everything, or is it just things they found out to become like some sort of superhuman? I'll use a really extreme example. I made a video recently on Brian Johnson. Have you guys seen this? Have you seen Brian Johnson? Oh, yeah, 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 I heard about it. Yeah, so he, he exited uh, Braintree of Emo, which is a payment processing company for like 
200 million or something like that, crazy. And uh, he's now committed himself fully to optimizing his health. And he spends $2 million a year on his health. Have you guys seen him? Yeah. Do you guys know what he looks like? Okay. Yeah. This is a really extreme example of what Yiska's referring to. He looks like a vampire, right? And he, he takes over 100 supplements per day. He avoids the sun at all costs. He does every therapy you can possibly imagine. I did so much research on it for this video and I scripted it word by word. So it took a long time. But this guy is like a nutter when it comes to quality of health. Whether or not he is more healthy than an individual that does the basic work is debated. It's something which we're yet to really see because it's such a new field. And of course, this is really like extreme biohacking. You can see here he's even looking at damage done to his skin by natural sunlight and how he can remedy that. That's an example of what he does in his lab, which is in his house. Yeah, it's kind of extreme. So it depends on, of course, your perspective on that. Personally, I think it's just a case of make, make sure you have the foundations maximized, particularly given that you guys don't want to be like health. He calls himself a health rejuvenation athlete. You guys don't want to be that. You want to be business people, right? So the basic premise from a supplementation perspective is get your blood work done, get personalized supplementation. And for sleep supplements, all you need to do is just take the following that I have on screen here. Yeah, you can keep it really simple. There's no need to have thousands of supplements in a drawer. Just do that. Keeps it super simple. And that will get you to a very good foundational level of health. Yeah. But this guy is nuts. If you haven't seen his stuff, you should, you should watch it. He's reversed. Say again. <laughs> so he's reversed his uh, pace of aging. So for every 365 days, he lives 277. And again, this is all debated because it's very new data and very new science and arguably no one's really done it before. His priority isn't to actually reverse aging like people claim or to live forever like people claim. He just wants to improve his quality of health because he was so unhealthy before. But um, yeah, he publishes all of his metric data, which is fascinating, but it's also, it depends on how far you guys want to go down to the rabbit hole because there's a lot of information he publishes and it's pretty extreme. But he, he's also a vegan. He's vegan, but he's, uh, he does weird shit like this. So, <laughs> yeah, he sees it as like an artistic pursuit now. Yeah, so it, it's an odd one. But yeah, he, he goes as far as, for example, like him and his son, they live together. They run up to their bedroom at bedtime. Like they do weird things like this. It's very odd. He won't have a partner because he doesn't want to share a bed. Like it's, it's a bit weird. Yeah, but you can see individuals like um, Bezos, for example, is definitely on TRT or some form of testosterone replacement therapy. All of these guys are. And also with the blood work you guys do, you guys can see, um, particularly for male clients, you guys can see your testosterone levels now when you're early 20s, which is really important to refer back to when you're in your 30s, 40s, because you can see if you actually should be on TRT, which is also something which perhaps we should all consider when we get to a certain age and we've had kids. Yeah, particularly for men, it's really important. So you guys could go to a doctor when you're 40 and say, hey man, here's all my blood work. Can you guys see what happened here, what happened here, etc.? What dose should I be on now? And they'll be like, oh shit, you're the best client ever. Yeah, they'll love you for that. And they'll give you very specific dosages for stuff. Yeah, makes sense. But yeah, a lot of these guys are doing crazy shit. Like Peter Thiel was supposedly drinking 12 year old's blood. All this kind of stuff. He's doing weird, weird, weird stuff. So yeah, funny that. Go for it, bro. Um, what supplements would you recommend to increase focus during working hours? I wouldn't argue the supplements are the key to facilitate that. I think fasting is great. And of course, how you manage your work blocks is also another thing, another variable to pay attention to. And determining how, for example, you prioritize your work block. So is it deep work in the morning for like six hours? Is it three tasks you're completing? Is it stuff where you're communicating with people? Decide that early. A lot of the clients that I work with just do deep work. So like three tasks in the morning, no communication, no emails, no software, no Slack, nothing like that at all. And they, they just focus on that until about 2 p.m. Then they go for a walk, train, far, break their fast, etc., And then do more communication work. But I think nootropics. I've taken, do you guys know what modafinil is? Have you heard of modafinil? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Modafinil is like a nootropic. Um, it's similar. It can be used for ADHD medication, right? So a lot of people claim they have ADHD, whether or not they do is a different matter. It can be used as ADHD medication. I took it just to test the impact it would have on my performance cognitively and also with work. Me and Iman both did actually for like six months. It was horrendous. Like the first day you feel amazing, you feel like you've taken the limitless pill. Like you know that film from Bradley Cooper? Yeah, we use that for the ad creator as well. <laughs> um, it feels amazing, but after that, it's weird. You start to have weird things like, the half-life is 18 hours. So if you take it too late, you won't be sleeping that night. You'll be working and you'll be great at work, but the next day you'll feel crap. Um, some individuals start to feel aggressive and agitated. I did, which I'd never experienced. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. And other nootropics are basically just caffeine wrapped in a supposed nootropic product. So again, not really advised. Yeah. So just, also like- Just fasting till you till the afternoon. Yeah, I've taken like every nootropic you possibly can. And I'd argue none of them are particularly beneficial in comparison to a good night of sleep and of course, fasting and deep work blocks. And then fast till 3 p.m. you said? It depends on the person, man. Depends on, on priorities. For example, I'm still fasted. 
today, but it, it depends entirely on, of course, your perspective and if you know you can manage certain window of calories in a certain time frame. So for example, Vladislav here, he's consuming in this instance, 2,600 calories per day. He couldn't consume that all in one meal. He'd have a really hard time doing that because he's gone from consuming five meals per day to two with a couple of snacks in there. Yeah, so maybe progressively he can get to one meal, but for now it's definitely gonna be two. Otherwise he's gonna be force feeding himself at 8 p.m. and he's gonna, he's gonna hate me. So yeah, we won't do that. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah, go for it. And like uh, when it comes to the dinner, like how uh, earlier should it be compared to when you go to sleep? When it comes to what, sorry? Dinner. dinner. About five hours prior to you. Five hours? Four to five hours prior to you. Yeah. Arguably, again, depends. Like the earlier you consume your last meal, typically speaking, the better your sleep quality and metrics. For some individuals, other individuals have a very carb heavy meal a couple of hours prior to bed and they actually sleep much better. It depends on the person. For me personally, if I consume food prior to bed, my sleep quality will go to shit, always. So for me personally, I want to consume it three, four, five hours prior to bed, for sure. So how late does he take the snack? Uh, he consumes that between his first and second meal. Would it, would it, or Say again? So he has the second meal and the snack? No, no, he consumes it before his second meal. So oh. in between his first and second. Yeah, yeah. Typically that's post-workout for him as well. So that's why we chose fruit sources because it's just easy on the go. Yeah. He does a lot of um, BJJ and also resistance training. So in this instance, we'll, the reason why his carbohydrate intake isn't particularly high yet, like 313 as a, a target isn't particularly high. Some individuals that I work with are on 500 grams per day, so energy expenditure equates for that. It's because um, previously he was ketogenic. So he hadn't had carbohydrates for like three years. What supplements would you recommend for uh, endurance during uh, training? So uh, just electrolytes. 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 If you're training for extensive periods of time, like hours and hours, some form of maltodextrin, cyclic dextrin is carbohydrates, which are really simple sources, but electrolytes are key. What's, for sure. a, what's a good product for that? Uh, elements. Elements? Yeah, this, this company here. What does it do with electrolytes? So most of us have been told when we were kids, how many of you guys have been told don't put salt on your food? Or like, don't put salt on your food. Too much salt is bad. They're like, everyone says it, right? We need to actually ensure that it, most of us consume filtered water also, which means it's not mineralized. We need to remineralize by consuming potassium and in this instance, also sodium. So you can see here it's 1000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium and also magnesium. That is what minerals are, it's how you mineralize water. So you're consuming this with it will also ensure that you're hydrated properly. You can perform well physically, you don't cramp. And also it will actually benefit you cognitively as well. So I did have loads of these with me in the suitcase. I had all my supplements and stuff to show you guys as well, but it's not here, but these taste banging. They yeah. taste really good. It is really good. Yeah, I do it first thing upon waking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Provided your intake's consistent, timing doesn't really matter. You take this every day? Yeah. Yeah, I put my creatine yeah, in there. It's also like some kind of just natural salt, right? Yeah, you can, use, you can use Celtic sea salts as well. Yeah. Just the taste is gross. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's horrible. So mo most people like spit it out straight away. I, I, yeah, Celtic sea salts I consumed extensively pre previously, but these taste so much better. But that's also like the best salt to put on your food. For sure. Yeah, yeah. In this instance, these are also flavored with stevia, so I'm not really too concerned by the ingredient profile. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, so it's not like I'm sacrificing anything to have flavored stuff. So yeah, these are really good. Go for it. What do you think of artificial flavors? I, personally, I'd avoid them as best as possible. In the same way that a lot of the stuff that's been developed as of late, um, in terms of society, I just wouldn't consume because we have no idea what the ramifications will be of that, of course. Because, for example, we, we have no idea if the population, it could be our, our generation, for example, will get sick from it long term or not. No one really knows. So for me personally, I, I wouldn't incorporate that as, as best as possible. And Steve, is not an artificial flavor, right? N it's one of the better ones. Yeah, to an extent, it's okay. What are your thoughts on uh, pine pollen? Because I've, I've done it now for over a month. I've, I quit. I stopped doing it. On what, sorry? Uh, pine pollen. Pine pollen. What's that? Do you know that? Ah, uh, pollen. From from the the pine pollen. From oh, pine pollen. Yeah. Pollen. Oh, yeah. Honey. No, it's no, no, no. 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 It's, 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 it's an energy <laughs> supplement. Like, oh, no. I've, no, I've it, not utilized it. It's testosterone and uh, also it's claimed to um, increase endurance uh, when, when training. Okay, no, I haven't looked into that personally, man. In the same way that, for example, like Tonga Ali, people advocated that as being something which boosts testosterone. There's so many other ways you can boost testosterone naturally. Yeah. Despite like, yeah, sleep quality, nutrition is so key, training. Supplementation otherwise, it will have very little benefit to you. Most individuals, like I'm sure you guys agree as well, most individuals place way too much significance on supplementation. Do you guys agree? They deem it to be something which can like ramif rectify so many issues or get them to the next level, it can't. 
Like if your supplementation is personalized to you, brilliant, that's gonna help you massively. Anything above and beyond that arguably isn't really needed that much. You can use things like adaptogens like ashwagandha, reishi spore, ginseng, etc., to calm you down when you're really stressed. If you're working, which some of you guys may be at times, they can be really beneficial. But other things like testosterone boosters, etc., totally pointless. Totally pointless, for sure. Okay. Yeah. You can leave it behind. Why don't you drink it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you got a test booster. I got the bag of the the pineapple. So oh, okay. Okay. I can show it to you. Yeah. It's in the kitchen. Yeah, no, like adaptogens. Have you guys used any? Like ashwagandha, stuff like that, reishi spore? No, they, before, but... Yeah, okay, cool. They can be really beneficial if you're in a particularly stressful period of work. They can be really beneficial to you just to keep you a little bit more neutral and kind of like mellowed out as opposed to constantly fluctuating with your heart rate, feeling really stressed and overwhelmed. Yeah, it can help a lot. Go for it. But uh, do you think that taking ashwagandha should be like in a certain period of time, so like two months, and then you should like stop? Even two months is quite long. Yeah, something, it's right. something which you shouldn't rely on every single day, for sure. It's something oh. which you leverage when needed. In the same way that, for example, I don't consume caffeine at all anymore. I Previously in COVID, I didn't consume caffeine for like nearly two years and I started consuming it again and now I don't at all. I think it's something which should be utilized when needed, when particularly sleep deprived or whatever it may be. But I think people rely on these sources much too heavily and actually it has much more negative consequences than beneficial ones in terms of particularly sleep quality. Right. Most individuals sleep quality is fucked by their caffeine intake, for sure. Yeah, and if you if you remove yourself from it for a significant period of time, you no longer depend on it at all. Like I don't crave caffeine in the slightest. Yeah, I've had clients that consume like twelve energy drinks a day. It's terrible. You can, you should see that heart rate. It's like sky high. It's like one fifty. It's terrible. Yeah, it's not good, man. It's not good. So what do you do like when, for instance, it's Christmas and everything, or you be around like family more often? Um, do you still follow your own diet? Or no, no, I enjoy it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's like a few days. Yeah. I think it's really important. Yeah. Personally for me, it's like I, I massively place importance on family and, and life like that. It's important to me. I won't go above and beyond where it's crazy or excessive and I'll still trade as normal, sleep as normal, but I'll just eat festive food for sure. Yeah. I'm not going to put on like 30 pounds from doing it or anything. Yeah. You're not getting sick or something like that because the, the difference is like really big. The difference is big, but it's only for a few days. Only, and everything else is still dialed in and improved. So yeah, not, not bad. Anything else, guys? Go for it. And when it comes to water, like apart from like avoiding tap water, is there a difference between like drinking water from like water bottles? Um, yeah. So, uh, how many of you guys have got a water filter? Do you guys all drink tap water? No. Yeah. 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 In the Netherlands. You, no. They're from the Netherlands. Tap water. The tap water is still better than that, so don't get. Yeah. Yeah. So at least at minimum, get a Brita water filter. So these aren't particularly expensive, so that's why I'm encouraging it. At least to get this. Isn't it better to get a zero water filter? There's so many, man. This is an example of one that's relatively cost effective. There's other other filters, for example, like AquaTrue. It depends how far again you want to go. AquaTrue is pretty expensive. It's going to be a couple of hundred euros at least, um, depending on. You can have a reverse osmosis filter as well. You can also put it under the sink, so it ensures that all of your water moving forward will be filtered. It's going to be a one-time cost. Um, yeah, of course, that's really beneficial. But if you are doing this, you must ensure you remineralize. Otherwise, again, you're, you're not incorporating the potassium, magnesium, and also sodium that you need daily. So it's really important that you do that through electrolytes as well. But isn't spring water very healthier? Yeah, it, it is, man, for sure. But most individuals don't have direct access to that or don't want to continue buying spring water right. all the time. So. Right, but then the glass bottles, right? Yeah, for sure, definitely. So Go for I have it. like the zero water filter at home, but it takes like everything out. Is, it, like, is there a way to add the minerals back in? Like, with all you need to do man is just your electrolytes okay, that's, that's, that's it then you're it good well, yeah like yeah it has everything in it you need uh spring water for sure spring water is there any brand specifically no uh no man actually in the course we do reference a couple for you guys that are based in europe so there's a couple you guys can um, reference there and buy and order in bulk um, just so you're aware, all the core stuff, we're not affiliated to anything in the course. It's just stuff that I use personally or have used with clients, just to clarify that. But yeah, there's a couple in there, man, so I'll, I'll send you the module directly. Uh, with the course also, um, what I'll do is I'll put it in the WhatsApp group, because I've got the bit.ly link for it. You guys can just join straight away. And um, what we've done in terms of keeping it formatted in a really simple manner is we've got a quick start here.